computer. It's mental fast enough to remember to turn on the sound. Nope. We will know in no. mere seconds. Okay, it wasn't too slow. Welcome to Everyone Racers. A show designed for the world of low-dollar racing. And an oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of limit champ or lucky track dog league you run. SECA or NASA, we won't discriminate. As long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussions, tips, and tricks, as well as news and notes. It's from the world of amateur endurance racing. And whether it's on the spot, Hello Sweet, Lucky Enough, and Chrissy. And Chrissy. Chrissy. And I give you just the tip. For sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. And I'm Mental. And Mental, I got to say, you did a nice job of the intro there. You had the sound on. You made it full screen. You even got the little like <laughs> bar out of the way showing how far along the thing is. And we didn't have to wait about 37 seconds until yeah. you were ready. So congrats. Yeah, so it's sure. only taking I'm, me I'm like... thankful for you getting it right today. That's great. <laughs> how many it's shows does it take like, us? Yeah. Well, the funny you should mention because right? we are everyone racers. And thank you for joining us for a contact episode of this podcast because it is episode three two one and only people of a certain age who park themselves in front of a television to get their education understand that reference pbs show back in Absolutely. the early mid 80s yes. i yeah. originally read that as the countdown show and then i thought you were gonna go and that's <laughs> not what was happening at all <laughs> we didn't hear three anything two said. one it's oh. lots out and we are away right, I, yeah. right? that's well, what the thankfulness for. episode of the e1r yeah i no i think i did have countdown but contact you is did I, I changed it to contact oh I can't, I can't okay. help but three two one contact no Just fine. Fine. it didn't click on my head and as soon as you put it in there way better mm -hmm. fine. Yep. speaking cool. of making things better Hey, what are you guys working on? Uh, working on the Mazda a bit uh, to finish that up. That is actually basically race ready and in the storage garage for next and year. Gone. Right. Bye. So had to do a control arm because the bushing was going and Rock Auto was getting upset at me. And I was like, well, we're going to refund you for this one, but no more. <laughs> and at that point, he's so like I the president I of Rock Auto going, seriously, Chris, just stop it. I Oh, well, I switched to a different brand now. Yeah. So, I mean, because I've basically exhausted the Delphi ones that I can have. So now we're trying Mevo Attack and see how those go. So, so if you are a representative of an axle manufacturer and you need control your arm, product, yes. I'm sorry, control arm and, and, and you service need your Mazda. product, test it. <laughs> We've Contact got you covered. Yes, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, so, did that uh, oil change and trans fluid change, cleaning it all up and washing stuff and you know things like rubber you know, remover ah, so yeah, great Chris, remover. Uh, doing um, like back flushing the radiator because it was surprising how much gunk kind of gets stuck on the front of the radiator between the oily mess and the dirt and stuff that drives hmm. through and that was probably limiting cooling a little bit so stuff like that um swapped all the cars around so got the had to move the mg out and move the Civic out and put the Mazda in and the MG and put the Civic in the trailer. And now the Civic is in the garage. And I've I've actually started working on prepping it for a cage, which is going and to happen this coming weekend. It's 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 been a hot minute, and I do not say this as a dig, but perhaps our listeners might be slightly confused as to which Civic you're talking about. It's true. Well, after we retired uh, the Civic, the 89 Civic we had for a long time, which was among other things, Mr. Fister, a giraffe, and Godzilla. And this is the car that won one B at New Jersey, one overall at Thompson. Uh, that car, we uh, we let it let it go away because the chassis was just so far tweaked at this point after the last hit it took at New Hampshire of a you can, you can only straighten a car with Suburbans so many times <laughs> exactly. So that chassis went away. We kept all the good parts and um, through a, a teammate of Manny's that we got turned onto a 93 Civic hatch with no engine that previously had a case swap as a drag car and had no interior. So it's kind of a hard thing to move unless you find the right person. And guess what? We are the right person. <laughs> so 
was it like two years ago? I actually spent the you know, a lot of the winter getting that all together and running. We ran it in an HPDE at uh, Grid Life a year and a half ago. Ran great, um, but just haven't caged it because we have the Mazda, and so it was low priority. Mm -hmm. um, but it's we're a, it's going a to do good looking car. Like the hood actually works a lot better than the that whatever idiot welded up that Frankenstein hood yeah. on the last one. The stock hood actually covers the K on this car, which is nice. Um, so yeah, we're going to uh, Bill and Vicky's hangar to do a cage on this car, and what has become an annual Thanksgiving weekend work weekend. So. Got uh, for the Civic. I took the doors. The doors still had door panels, windows, the whole thing. So uh, now they are just gutted shells, ready for door bars. Um, I'm ready. Yep. Uh, so that'll be nice. Uh, did Mercedes winter tires and an under tray because something had taken a massive bite out of the under tray or one of one of the under trays under the Merc. So put a new one on and just doing some um, trip planning and stuff like that for some things we're going to do coming up soon. Very nice. Might, Very might nice. have a, might have a new surprise, Kevin. We'll see. Mm, what, uh, what is, what? is, is someone besides me going to make a questionable automotive decision? <laughs> no. As long oh, as well, it's informed? Nope. well informed. Well informed. Well <laughs> informed. With That's exit right. strategies and yeah. plans and understanding how things fit and actually plan A, B, and, and C. Yeah. And now, yes. Are we vague casting? Yes, listener, we are yeah. absolutely vague casting. And you're going to need to stay tuned to our social media because whatever you think it is, you're wrong because it shocked <laughs> me and I am very excited. <laughs> it could be so yep. many things. Anyway, so as Chris is doing the, all of this cleaning, I was helping as well because I like to clean. Uh, Chris was just adding more wheels and tires to the lawn and I cleaned the mall. <laughs> so yeah, you know, in 12. the South, we just, 12, call those, yeah. we just call those planters. But nope. yes, this was, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, right. When you switch the Merc wheels from summer 20s to uh, winters, you don't make them planters. So yeah. uh, so you know, no. you're, you're throwing wheels on the lawn. Yeah, fill them up full of dirt. <laughs> burn in there. It's fine. <laughs> no, we did none yeah. of those things. I you did all to, the cleaning. Know, keep race <laughs> tires to be adequate for next season instead of just leaving them outside in the cold. They go in the yep. basement where it's dark and 65 degrees all the time. And uh, yes. for that, yeah, we, we've covered this on just the tip too. You wrap them in a black plastic bag because they can uh, get damaged being exposed to light, correct? Uh, well, you normally would, but we don't because they're on the workshop side of our basement that does not have a window. So they do oh, not get yeah, any yeah. light exposure right. there and they get. And we barely and turn the lights on anyway. Stable temperature so. and yeah. Well, they're LEDs, so, but yes. I guess, too. Yeah, but not everybody has that kind of luxury to put that, right. especially that many wheels, sure. because we have lots of wheels in the basement now. But so if you're I was cleaning race tires, black trash bags. Yeah, we've got at least two dozen wheels and tires in the basement at the moment. Very nice. Snacks get pretty big. Okay, that's what we've been working on. Mental, tell us all what you've been doing. So uh, I'm going to surprise you guys a little bit. Um, you know, I, I, there was a, a, an automotive event. I think we're going to talk about that here in a little bit, but I also had the opportunity to play tour guide to the one, the only Ken Kodak. Oh, fun. He was here actually flagging the F1 race. Now there's a picture of us. We, uh, we, we went to Hoover Dam yesterday. So, uh, Damn. you know, yeah, but up, up and let me uh, see if I can <laughs> fix easy. this. Yeah. Too, too easy, but this was the, this was a fun one and it was totally unplanned. Uh, he, you know, he, obviously his sleep cycle is a little off. So I picked him up a little after 11. We went and got some lunch. Hey, what do you want to see? What do you want to do? He's, you know, not much of a gambler. He's not into that thing. He's like, you know, I'd like to go on base and see the Thunderbird museum. So we went on to Nellis Air Force Base. There we are. And, uh, yeah, there it is. The, that's us in front of the Thunderbird one static display the Thunderbird Museum, we're in there and this is, uh, they're practicing for their upcoming show season. So occasionally I'll walk outside and see them out there doing their, the Thunderbirds out there doing their thing, the aerial demonstration team. And there were five young enlisted folks in one of the rooms in there and uh, it, just them and me and Ken. And they said, we are applicants for this year's support team for the Thunderbirds. Part of that process, it is a long, you know, you have to apply. You obviously have to be the best at what you do. 
And they also have to learn the history and be able to present a tour of the Thunderbird Museum. Today, wow. they were having to give that to their senior enlisted, the first sergeant, and they wanted to practice. So Ken and I were treated to an exclusive tour from the newest <laughs> applicants of the United States Air Force's aerial Get demonstration out. team as they That's walked fun. us through the entire history of the wow. Thunderbirds. It was huh. really, I've, I've been in there like four times. It's the first time it's ever happened. It's really fantastic. Wow. And as you can imagine, Ken was just having a great time with that sort of thing. That's so awesome. uh, I've got to go in there tomorrow and see how it went, make sure it all, you know, cause I, <laughs> I, I thought they had their feces co-located, but uh, obviously I'm not the person making the decision. So that, you know, that might be a little tighter. So yeah, that was, uh, that was mine. My, um, you know, post-race uh, kind of weekend. Well, well can you tell us a little bit about what you did for the race? Because I think ah, you went somewhere. I did. I did. So uh, you, Everyone knows if you're not paying attention, we, we obviously, we are media partners, finger quotes with racing junk and racing junk. They, they don't give us any money, but we like racing junk. And they uh, pointed us a couple of people a few years ago. They uh, introduced me to a guy named Chris Shelton. He used to work for the Peterson hot rod empire. He's a brilliant photographer, a really good writer native of Las Vegas now lives in Seattle. So he and I actually get along famously. He was in town for SEMA, stayed all the way through hanging out, helping out his dad and his sister still lives here. And he had the Willy Wonka tickets for the practice, the free practice. So I got to go to the top uh, row of the paddock, like the penthouse suite. I'm hanging up there with all the, the, the narrative. When we got there a little late, <clears throat> and so the, the railing to watch the race or to watch the practice was about two people deep already. And then we're, we're watching the screens kind of, we found some short people that we could look over and we saw, <laughs> Oh, okay. Yellow flag first sector. We're going to sneak inside real quick while it's a yellow flag and boring, get a table, get some of this free food and drink. And then while we sat down and got some of the free food and drink, we look up on the screen, red flag. Oh, the entire free practice has been canceled and the place emptied out. So here's an entire group oh. of servers and everybody that's up there with this, all this wonderful food. And these people are suddenly un underemployed. So we're just chatting it up with all the servers. And uh, Chris had mentioned wow. in a text, uh, if you saw the signs, the, what, what's the, the Vo, Vo, Votar or whatever, the, what are the tequila, the tequila? Yeah. He's Everywhere. like, Hey, did you, was it a Vulcan, you... Vulcan spelled different? Vulcan, spelled Vulcan wrong. or so, yeah. yeah. Vulcan. Did you, oh, Vulcan. Uh, did you, did you get a chance to try into that? And uh, my reply was, oh, I tried a lot of them. I tried very, very many of them. And uh, that was my, so while everyone else was complaining, they got nine minutes of uh, free practice. I got so much tequila. <laughs> I can't believe people left. If you went to a, I have a venue that you have free food and drink. Like what, where are you going home? So many of those was, people. And then, and the same thing happened Saturday when we we're at the race, we were at a venue where dumb. there was a, a, there are absolutely, they, they are dumb. And this is where Max's argument does have some validity. They were there to be seen being there. And there were race fans oh. that were there and there were experiential fans that were there and they were having a great time. But then, you know, as soon as, well, there's no one here to see me be, you know, watching this race, oh. I'm, 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 I'm gone. Um, okay. good you for know, you. So it was great. Uh, but, you know, a lot of the uh, servers were local, so they're having conversations with Chris. Oh, I went to this high school. Oh, man, yeah. That, you know, it, it was just, we had a great time. And great. Uh, after many, many tequilas, about 125 or so, we decided it's probably time to wander down to the one of the nearer hotels and catch an Uber home. And uh, I they they announced, hey, everyone needs to clear out of the fan zone by 130. And just out of curiosity, I looked at my watch, and it was 128. So that was the 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 static that they're taking about their bad management crowd management of that one um dead on because they really should have been talking about this about an hour beforehand and then they should have said why which it was union concerns all of the staff mm -hmm. there was working under union rules right, and right, we're right. just going to run up the end of their day yeah neither here and we'll talk about that we will beat the snot out of that horse as we go on but yes that was a th okay. then uh saturday vicky and i actually got tickets to the venue itself and uh, we got to see from the rooftop it was a really good race and another one of those places where there was a great many people that were there just trying to be seen being there but our little tiny chunk of viewership where we were up against the glass we quickly all found out that we are all enthusiasts so we were oh, paying good. attention to the race and a couple of like the you know 
teetering over on their very tall spiky heels and aftermarket front <laughs> mounts are like, you know, can I, can I try to get through there? And I distinctly remember saying to one of them, you can try. It, it's not going to work, but you, 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 you know, I don't want to be rude. And uh, two of the people that we were watching the race with, they had um, the F1 app. So they're holding their phones up against the glass. We'd watch oh, yeah. the cars go by and then immediately look at somebody's phone to see if they were successful in the past and everything. So yeah. we actually got to watch the race with a lot of enthusiasts. I had a great time. Oh, good. That's exactly what we did when we went to Montreal. Like mm -hmm. we had all, all of the iPad and phone and you're like, okay, what's actually <laughs> happening on the rest of this track? Because it's very hard to keep track. And I, you know, I'm having that conversation at work today and they're like, well, you, you can only see like part of the track. That is literally everything, but a short course at a NASCAR, you know, even a super speedway, you can't see the whole track at once, right. no matter where you're sitting. So that's just, you know, that's how I you feel like you, you probably yeah. could have watched this race again and learned more things because totally did. Just this, Came did home, you, yeah. turned it on, watched mm -hmm. it again. We did the same mm -hmm. thing with Montreal, but it, we, we it, there was a lot less that happened in Montreal, but there was a lot that happened in, in, uh, in, this fit this race so great i'm good sound like you had a great time that's good yes sorry this wasn't on any of our list stuff um and we've talked a while about this yeah that's a good we we talk smack about it so we got to give it an honest assessment or at least uh, give it up an update i am i am loving what what, what is coming next I, I, <gasps> oh I, i'm I just... so excited about this <laughs> i found this and then uh yes okay this is okay in a rather surprising but kind gesture, Alfa Romeo F1 driver Valtteri Bottas has launched a nude calendar to raise money for Movember, a movement that highlights prostate and testicular cancer. So John jo 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 uh, from Sports Illustrated writes that uh, the 34-year-old driver has been brave enough to go fully naked in recent years to attract funds to help for various causes. His attention-grabbing appearances demonstrated as he playfully underwent an Amusic Australian transformation uh, earlier this year, which includes a stylish mullet. Which Previously, he kind Bottas of already has one. Oh, yeah. That was earlier this year that he did. Yeah, yeah he still okay. kept it. It's yeah, because when they do the much. intros at the beginning of every F1 broadcast, it, that, that stands out. That's awesome. Oh, mm. yeah, it's too much. Uh, previous B Batas made news for after af after being clicked nude in a river, a huge imprint, a huge printed version of which was presented to Lewis Hamilton. Now, though, he has bumped the number uh, up to daring 13 nude images, enough to fill an entire calendar. Uh, the, every month will showcase a distant, a distant, a uh, distinct photograph of Bottas in the nude set against striking backgrounds captured by his friend, Paul Ripke. Available for $20, $5 each for each sale goes towards prostate research, cancer research. Do we call, we didn't even say what this is it, called. It's called Bottas. B-O-T-T-A-S-S. -S. I love Bot this. Ass. Love yep, it. Yep. I saw that this is... earlier. I showed Chris and I was oh. like, this is amazing. Uh, and the pictures are really that they're they're beautiful places. So uh, you got to at least Google it because it's kind of well, we we it's a great cause. And naturally, we're going to have a link to this in our show notes. You got to look at it. <laughs> it's amazing. Yep. I might buy one. You, you totally should. It's a good cause. Just buy two. On the give one to your mom. Yeah. I will not give it. I will not put it up at work. <laughs> no, but give one to your mom or you know what? I'm going to buy one and give it to your mom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's uh, in the well, mail, Carol. In other news, it's the end of an era. Uh, Aaron Marquis at Jalapnik tells us that the legendary Top Gear has been, quote, suspended indefinitely, end quote. Last December, Freddie Flintoff spied a massive crash of the Top Gear test track. While BBC initially claimed they would not shelve the show, they just did announce that they, quote, decided to rest the UK show for the foreseeable future. Now, this comes after the BBC recently settled with Freddie for $11.2 million. The renowned cricket player was one of the three current hosts, which also included actor Patty McGuinness and racing legend Chris Harris. The show has been a broadcast since 1977. And in 2001, Jeremy Clarkson and producer Andy Wilhelm famously revamped the show with what would become its trademark humor, unusual car reviews, road trips, races, and oddball challenges. Uh, there have been 13 presenters over the run of the UK version that inspired 11 spinoffs from nation around the world, not to mention all kinds of knockoffs from any fool with a camera. <laughs> yep. All right. Yep. Now, this one showed up in our social feeds, but it's a heartwarming grassroots story. If you haven't seen it, James Gilboy at The Drive has the story of Wooter Jan Van Dyke. 
He was a Dutchman living in Australia, and he just finished this year's international Baja 1000 running the pro moto Ironman class. And that means he had one motorcycle and solo rode 1300 miles off road. And it started when he hopped on a plane to San Diego, bought a used KTM off of Craigslist, then rode it to La Paz, Mexico. Once he got there, he failed tech because he had a cracked frame and bald tires, which he suspected was because he loaded up saddlebags with minimalist gear, but more than the KTM. Other teams stepped in. They gave him tires. They welded up the frame and helped him make the start of the race. He never pre-ran the course. And he started in the middle of the night. He had no support crew, so he would refuel at gas stations along the route. Bent his rear rim to the point where the tire would not hold air. And then he lost his GPS a hundred miles from the finish. So when he stopped to examine a map, another race team got the bike, zip tied the tire so he could actually hold air and finish. Now, ultimately, Wouter Jean would cross the finish line at 48 hours, 27 minutes and three seconds. He finished seventh in his class. This, all of this gives me just anxiety. I'm like, it gives me, it fills me with hope and delight. I'm like, I'm like, (laughs) I'm just glad this poor fool didn't die, but good for him. (laughs) (laughs) It would have, this would have been a tragedy, but I just, I look at that and it just reconfirms my true belief that racers are just the best people. Cause I can picture like one of these high end proteins looking over and like, look at this idiot. Yeah. Let's get over there and weld that thing up. I mean, you know, yeah, that is just, he had no food. Like other teams were just, you know, hey man, you hungry here? Eat this real quick while they gas up his bike for him or take care of him. Wow. And he's got some pictures. And he he had done some off roading. You know, he was a motorcycle enthusiast, but he's just Joe average guy, man. This is so much be sore for days. <laughs> oh, I days. Well, he rode for two days right. straight. <laughs> Probably, I guess he didn't sleep because no, he, rode he did for not. Two days. He, he talked about no. how he was kind of starting to turn into a zombie. Oh, starting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I feel like after you like get off a boat after a while and you still feel like you're on the boat kind of thing, this is like, you oh. still feel that you're on the bike. You're just like bouncing, 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 bouncing. Yeah, uh, I, I, I tell everyone that'll listen 15 years ago, I rode through Mexico on a, uh, enduro bike with, with three friends, but we were stopping at night, but the exact same thing, your, your hands just constantly, you know, you, oh. like, they feel like they're buzzing mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and, a lot of what we rode was way nicer than what he rode across. Sure. Shoot. Mm. So much. Good for him. <laughs> On to things that we are thankful for. We are thankful to our media partners at Racing Junk. And Chris, you found something very special, didn't I you? I did. So are you tired of going to Cars and Coffee and things like that and hearing all the Corvette and P-Car douchebags talking about how rare their car is? Do you want something different that's going to shut them up? All right. How about something topless, turbo, six Mm, speed? Yes. I don't know. Sounds exotic. That still might be too common. How about three wheels? And no, it's not another slingshot. Those are so played out, right? Yeah. So here on Racing Junk, we found a 2017 Vanderhall Venice with an unbelievable 863 miles. Now, this thing is like new everywhere and it's ready for you to make some bad decisions putting some miles on this thing it's got a turbocharged 1.4 liter ecotech engine uh, an optional semi-automatic bump shift which is that chrome lever you're seeing on the left of the driver heated seats alloy wheels that actually look really nice on this thing uh and it's got a look that's absolutely is going to make people ask wow, you stupid it's, questions it's cool yeah the it, interior it is. Is simple, but looks fairly comfortable and um, like huh. has a lot of interesting detailing going on. So, yeah, this is like a a a, a it's like a cross between a a um, Morgan three wheeler and a and a Polaris one, and then it looks like it's got some real performance instead of that stupid Harley motor and uh, actual real tires under it. But it's not yeah, just I looks like, like a, a eight year old designed it in study hall. it's giving off like those morgan three-wheeler vibes yeah but but like a little but it went to the gym and did a lot of heavy lifting (laughs) yeah 
Yep. I don't know where I you're going to put I, anything in. You're not can't bring oh, you anything don't. It's, with it's you. It's a motorcycle, mm-hmm. basically. Yes, but you cannot bring anything with you. It seemed unique. I've never seen one before, and it's twenty three thousand yeah. five hundred ninety five dollars. Which is you know kind of blowing stupid money in a toy. That's not tragic money for a toy. There is so, one of these on the local marketplace, and it is easily five grand more, and it has thousands of miles. This is yeah. a smoking deal. It's a, granted very limited appeal, but yeah. Oof, I do in like Florida. it. Yeah. In Florida. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the kind of place to own one of these, frankly. Yeah, yeah, but... yeah. And you can yeah. drive it often. Cool. Good find. And yep. speaking of things you can find, you should find that pro membership, put in that pod 23 discount code and get all the cool stuff. Five ads, 50 photos, know who's watching your item, all the cool stuff. Do yourself enjoy scrolling, get early access to items. They got t-shirts, you get like all kinds of, you get like a discount in their store. It's fantastic. Check it all out. Racingjunk.com. Great. Uh, Yep. Upcoming races. Yep. (laughs) We only have four of them left. Two lemons. Hmm. Two champ, and neither one of them are this weekend. Hmm. Okay. Oh well. It's Recent that results. Time of year. Recent hey, there results. There was that race in Vegas. There was just that Mental minor talk little, a little thing. bit about it. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize we we're waiting till here. I apologize. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh your A class winner and overall, uh, despite talking. <laughs> no some... one cares. <laughs> no one cares. Despite talking trash, he actually said at the end of it, he enjoyed the race. Oh, Second that place. was so show. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. show. Second place. And he earned it despite him passing my guy. Leclerc literally in the last big corner made a very calculated move against Checo Perez, got second place. And then Checo himself came in third place. If you follow Checo's social media, he posted a great picture of him and Leclerc afterwards exhausted against the tire wall, looking at each other laughing. And then in one of the um, Spanish language interviews, uh, he's like, uh, it's okay. We uh, he He's a little off because we've been celebrating with some tequila. So uh, just, just showing how classy they were and the respect he has for everyone else. But for everyone that has not been following this news uh, and, oh, it's terrible. They're never going to do it again. Looking at you, Tom. Wynn Resorts said they had over $414,000 in tips over the weekend because they do track that that is put on cards and the cosmopolitan said over 300 K and that's the ones that they know about. That's not counting the cash ones that got thrown in there. Liberty media met its $500 million goal, which was that what they said out there, they did have some unsold seats. Yes. There were growing pains. Yes. They bolted down the stupid manhole or the uh, valve cover on that one. It ripped the entire housing out of it happened right in front of Ken Kodak, oddly enough. And they had wow, to go through and that's fix exciting. all of that. Yeah. Uh, for hours, um, 45 minutes after we bought our tickets to watch from the roof of the Dre's Casino, the Cromwell, uh, I managed to have a scooter accident and squish my foot. So my entire foot, the one that I just had fixed, is black and blue. So I'm gimping really hard right now. And there was still no way I was going to miss this. So I gimped my way all the way to the center of the Island. It wasn't fun, but it wasn't the worst thing ever. Uh, and yes, they've already started to, you can now put down your deposit for formula one 2024. Not surprised. You crashed your scooter again. I don't know. It was literally a puddle. I had to go get the RV and there was a puddle of something. As I turned, it just 10 miles an hour washed right out on me and landed on my foot. And then I had to come back and tell Vicky that I scuffed her scooter again. Yeah. Come on. I mean, this is a lot better than that thing. <laughs> but this, but a variety it, of times now. Squishing yeah. your foot is not as bad as the last accident that you had in it. Oh yeah. No, I do have, <laughs> it's not as bad as the other one, but I do have a, a nice little. Oh, know, and I had a, I had a long sleeve shirt on too. So yeah. Uh, okay. That was through the uh, sleep. All the gear all the time. Uh, yes. Scooter. It's all the gear. I the did flops. not scuff my helmet. My helmet was actually completely unscuffed. So I, yeah, it was that slow of a get, get down. Good. Good. Okay. Listen to feedback time. Okay. So <laughs> this is going to go into our main topic time, but we've got a good one on it. Okay. So on the YouTubes, Tim B says, 
Chris gives just the tip. Mental says, wow, we never get that from him. And Chrissy says, what? He does it all the time. I almost spit out my coffee. And then he goes on and says, And we totally didn't catch that. <laughs> yep. Nope. Because we don't listen uh, to ourselves. So there's that. <laughs> um, bold prediction. I heard the worst time. <laughs> Haas will score points. This tank should be good uh, for them since they suffered from high uh, high tire dig. This track will be perfect for them. And that track. was interesting mm. uh, with the temperatures. Yeah, they did not get any tire degradation. They were all running the hard compounds. During the, and I know you guys have caught up now. You watched the free practice and the qualies. You, you saw, you, you saw, yeah, you yeah. saw. Was free it, practice uh, one that wouldn't take very long. So it was right. Like, it wasn't yeah, too bad. yeah. We did watch uh, it though. Yeah, yeah, and you could see they were very quickly trying to fill airspace, and I think uh, on mine they just went to football. Uh, oh. But watching the cars actually, like in the cold temperatures, they were having some some of them step out, and they were having to catch them a little bit and reminding it was everybody icy. That we do still drive these things. Right. So it was fun. Ah, uh, cool, cool. So right. yes, tons of feedback. Everybody, thank you all for your feedback on thankfulness. And we are going to go through these as we talk about our main topic, which is the, as uh, it has come to be known, the hippie feels bullshit mental Thanksgiving episode. <laughs> I mean, I you added all accurate. those middle words. <laughs> I think that's an accurate description. Yes. <laughs> So uh, this is it's and and jump in here at any point, but this is a, a practice where we as a group and hopefully you as well look back and rather rather than just get focused and wrapped up in the holiday spirit, you actually take an opportunity to recognize the good things that you have in your life and the opportunities, and we are here to verbalize those and we're going to go through them and. Uh, well, basically the same order we've had for the last couple of years, because I always just do a copy and paste on last year's episode and then we fill it in. So we can also dance around on that. I don't know how it's all going to go, but we are grateful for a great many things and it falls into what we do and all as a hobby and as a living and in our family and everything. So thank you all. Uh, if we don't get to yours, I hope we do. Uh, but thank you all for sharing what you're grateful for and what you're happy for about. And if you're trapped in the car with someone who is making you listen to this episode, know that everyone that gave us feedback, the first thing they said was they were thankful for their family. And that means you, good family member who has put up <laughs> not just with this episode and this podcast, but put up with their racing. So we also thank you for listening to this episode. Oh, wow. So mic nice. drop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we'll, we'll let's just start out we'll with the roll racing. right in. Sure. Yeah, yeah. What, you know, so, what, what is the racing brought you? Who wants to jump into that one? <laughs> I, I can start. Well, let's talk about the racing people. I think there's going to be some, some themes you're going to see of people, places and experiences coming along here. So racing people, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's hard to, to narrow it down, so I'm not going to. I'm going to say almost all of the Lemons community. Not all, because some of them are jerks and they don't <laughs> listen. But <laughs> every race has just so many friends to see and so many other nice people that we continue to meet. And it's just a, a really nice community, and I'm thrilled to be a part of it. It's great. Every race is just happy. Even if you're having a lousy time, you're still going to have a nice conversation with somebody. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, so I am going to go with our team, our immediate team and hangers on, I'm going to say, um, especially cause I was thinking about this year and what we went through, um, and celebrating crying together over Aaron's passing. Uh, I think, um, we had a whole lot of friends that were close, but not so close that came to his, um, his party and we had a, we had a good time thinking about him uh, and then had a couple good moments with all of our friends this year throughout racing and just remembering him and, and the great person he was. Well, mm -hmm. It goes with what, like Matt F said, family, friends, health, race cars, my ragtag team that puts up with all of me and space pants. And he said, I've space met so many pants. cool people in the community. Thanks for all them and you. So it's right along that same line, Matt. Thanks. Yeah, that is a wonderful one. Uh, obviously 
three pedal mafia. You guys are great. Love running with you guys, but I'm going to throw in Jerry and his great crew and team that he has built over the years. The inglorious bass turds, Jerry, Blake, Stu, Vince, Marty got to run several races with them, including, uh, uh, the HPR race where we were all up there together. That was a great time. Thankful for this. Got to run the true 24 at HPR. And I was invited by Jeff Hanka, who was one of our guests. And that was without a doubt, the most intimidating driver lineup I've ever been a part of. I knew those guys, but I didn't know them personally. And to be on that team, I just remember looking around going, I am really out of my element here. I am, I am, I am outclassed and I'm really going to have to step it up and just be a proper member of that team. So they kept me honest. They kept me great. Um, it was, yeah, just what a great time. And, uh, I had seen them on lemons rallies, but by virtue of us being in the same place, like nine times this year, got to know Tom and Jan and they're just low key. Tom is very, very funny. He'll make a joke and he doesn't care if you laugh or not. And then you have to like 30 seconds later go, did, did he just say that? That's hilarious. Yeah. So that was some great stuff. So yeah, they're great people. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yes. And I got this out of order on this one, but the, the places, I think you should lead off with that one, Chrissy. Okay. So uh, the two places that I think were something special, I mean, obviously we went to a lot of places. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but the two different places for racing are, are Colorado. So while we didn't race in Colorado, we still went to Colorado. Chris and I love Colorado. So uh, that was a fun, fun trip. And uh, my Montreal. So also in the whole experience, um, both of those things were fun new places that we haven't been to before. Uh, and so I have a thankful note from Greg O'Brien and he says within the, co the context of E1R, I'm thankful for so many options and choices for entry level grassroots endurance racing. I never previously considered road racing in my youth uh, due to pre perceived financial barriers to entry. Here it is 2023 and there are a dizzying number of, of racing options to suit my personal schedule, taste preferences and budget every year new events are added and just recently there have been small surge in new tracks being built having participated in declining motorsports i don't take it for granted in contrast many other forms of motorsports are seeing their entrance age out there are less drag strips and circle tracks every year good note absolutely that is a good one and um let's see you have scroll down i'm trying to scroll up and down at the same time uh monaco i mean duh Thank you, my brother, who's not listening to this, but I don't care because you let me go. You pay for me to go to Monaco. That was wonderful. Also, California, scrolling through my phone, trying to kind of get an idea of how long this year is gone because it still feels like it's fall of 2019 sometimes. Um, California, after we did our last Thanksgiving episode, I actually had jumped in the car and ran to uh, uh, Thunder Hill and ran the NASA 25 again. So that was a fantastic event. And uh, in, uh, this year too, like two of our guys got to, two of our lemons people got to do the 25 hours of Thunder Hill. So that was, that was really, really good. So California, I've got to, you know, again, have experiences in the 12 months of the show in places that I had not gone. And one of those was some tracks in California. I'm going to say and what Chrissy said. <laughs> yep. Yes. We basically did all of it together. Yeah. We did. Uh, okay. ex yes. Experiences. So uh, I mentioned the 25 and I got to see you guys like half a dozen times this year. So it much. We've gone the whole great. years and multiple years and not seeing each other. Yes. And yes. got to see you guys in meat space. That was wonderful. And I've got on my little secret notes that I didn't put in our shared document. Uh, back to the OG at New Hampshire. I just remember Saturday. I'm like, oh, this just feels, this feels like your favorite jacket. You know, oh, it's finally <laughs> cool enough to put in your favorite jacket. I feel good. I look good. It's just right. And that was you guys. That was just fantastic out there. But experiences, and I'm going to throw this out there because I bet it has fallen off your memory, but you're going to laugh. 
the moth incident at HPR. Oh, it's it's down here. Oh no, mine's down here. Or maybe it's not. Oh god. Oh, I think I, that was in my thought of Col- yeah. of Colorado experiences. Yeah. I think that's where my yeah. Yep. Oh, just oh, it, it, we it, all it. hurt by the time yep. we got to the hotel because we were laughing so hard. And we would we would love to explain it to you, but it would absolutely lose something in translation. But I'm certain most of you have had those incidents sometimes over the year where the silliest thing was so funny you couldn't breathe. And we asked we had one of those the entire drive back from High Plains Raceway <laughs> to the why, hotel. Why does the car alarm keep going <laughs> off? <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> oh man, that was just so great. <laughs> yeah, that's so much. Yeah, it was totally. All right. Uh, I'm going to say a little different turn. In this experience of seeing the results of development in the Mazda. We've been working on that car for a while. It started as a you know in a pretty good spot as a street car essentially, and just over a lot of little tweaking and things that we've been doing, that car's gotten to be properly a decent race car. It's quick enough. It's never going to win a, but it's quick enough that you you're running with whoever you want to run with it's got the fuel economy has actually worked out better tires are wearing well brakes are wearing well everything's just wearing well and the car's just a pleasure to drive i'm really happy to see how well it's come together yes I'm go with ditto i'm pretty sure i wrote mine before you even wrote yours and i don't think that is fair but okay it's yes. a different angle than what you're saying Okay, fine. I am excited that or the experience of seeing the glimpse of almost winning our class. So we're getting close Repeatedly. and yep. So many times. So many times. Over and over again. Also, I was looking back through all of our posts from this year and I'm like, journey is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I still have you, you this thing. saying that for the two weeks after the event, but uh, I no, I was just going to tell you, like, so I have a radio that because we can't wear earbuds in our in our plant, and so there's there's music and it kind of oscillates all the time. And uh, when Journey comes on, I'm like, oh my, what what is happening? It's Journey, um, and I just I most of the music I don't even notice it, don't even care, and then all of a sudden, and when it's Journey, I notice. Because he didn't know that I had an off switch in the car that the driver could use to turn the stereo off. When they I, mean, were I think I did, but I thought we were just using it all the time. And so I just did that. And now I'm regretting it in life. And it's how many months later? So many. Ugh. Uh, okay. Anyway, I, you, you were talking about it. You were telling the story of like, you'll walk into a place and be like, Hey, we've really got to get these forms done. And you need to make sure you guys, is that fucking journey? <laughs> don't stop believe i was like oh make it stop anyway let's move on let's talk about the show <laughs> oh so uh this year chrissy you did point out that uh we didn't have as many guests on and uh it, it, just the way it was but uh i think there's still some some people or some some time that we had out there with the show yeah, I'm I'm going to be general again because I think this is the best answer. People relating to the show, I think it's our listeners who I continue to meet more of and appreciate it. And people talk and it's you know funny to talk to people like, I don't really know you, but you know me. And it's always <laughs> strange, but I appreciate talking to you. And you're always because our listeners are are almost without fail above average people with poor taste in podcasts. And I appreciate that. And it's nice to talk to all these, these, these great people. Mm-hmm. I am going to go this, set, this next step of where you're implying is that we do actually have, and we've also had friends that we've met even recently uh, that are listeners that we know better. So I think like even this mm-hmm. year, we've got to know a bunch of people that comment and post and not just our friends and not just Eric K and Tim B and just like there are other people that we've got to know. So I think they're just as great. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to go really long on this one. So stay with me on this. No one. way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I had met them racing, but uh, I got to meet the Cordell brothers, but then doing the Alaska rally, got to meet like their whole family. And that was just great. Here's this per- random hippie person that says, anybody know a car? And they're like, Oh, that's a 
judge from California. Yeah, you know what? I got one parked in my backyard. Why not just fly up here and drive it across Alaska? Sure. And they did. It was that was just fantastic. Uh, going through my phone again, just trying to understand, you know, the passing of time. Uh, uh, Daniel Iglesias, our resident alien rally driver, former guest, uh, came through Vegas and hanging out with him. He linked me to his wife's comedy. She's got a great comedy channel. It's hilarious. And then just going on what you guys, other interactions we've had with our listeners, uh, like Adam Narwaki, who posted this on Facebook, things I am grateful for. The ever patient Mrs. Narwaki Rocky that puts up with this obsession, my health and opportunity to pursue happiness, the garage Mahal, my fortress of solitude, where I create new problems to solve every day. Jay, Nick, Eric, Kim, for creating this community that I've come to appreciate dearly. Kathy, for doing her ever-loving best to bring Lucky Dog to Brainerd, Minnesota. He is insert a plea. Come on, people. We need you to run with us here. I do want to get up to Brainerd. I've heard from several people in that area. It's a great track. And he posted a pic of his team and then added this group of fools, friends that hang out and dominated question mark had a blast in 2023 great on you and he thanked us the e1r podcast for filling his garage when he is wrenching solo quote you guys don't know how much it keeps me moving when i'm about to burn it all to the ground fire is bad don't burn your garage <laughs> to the ground we're glad we can keep you grounded that's an early episode fire's bad uh, yeah along those same lines jeremy m said so many things to be thankful for racing and otherwise the sport continues to bring my wife laura and i in contact with amazing people every time we go racing the people experiences places the sport brings us to are awesome yeah there you go indeed and uh in the mention of health yeah, uh, before you know and don't get all political on us just save your ass right now our our european market Erling said he is grateful to the Swedish healthcare system that saved me and helped him back after his COVID time. We almost lost him this year. We, 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 we didn't know until after he had recovered and also all of his friends as well. So thank you, Erling. We love, we don't make the jokes anymore and we hope we haven't shocked you into wrecking a bus. Uh, but also I think zoom listening. is really good about making it so that we don't blow people's ears out. It might yeah, be a just, thing just cuts that might off. be like stunt and exploded that we did. <laughs> Jim's like, oh, God, goodness, these people I mean, are just too loud. Yeah, a lot of people that yell on Zoom meetings, that's for sure. It's not Fine. Just okay. Yeah. Well, we probably didn't help it. And now Erling should not be losing his ears because we are appropriately. We're, we're glad you're still with us, Erling. We really, really are. Uh, also, Doug K. Nice to hear from him. He said, nerds, I'm thankful for longstanding <laughs> friendships like you. Yes. Hmm. Right. Okay. Ready to move on? <laughs> this is Places. funny because we, in a vacuum, all pick the same thing. Well, yeah. It's duh. places for the show and experience. It's, well, PVGP. We did that this year. That was a big, that was a place. It was an experience. It was totally different. Yeah. Yeah. And that just straight up as a result of, you know, well, our partnership with racing junk and, and uh, yeah. And then hope I'm, I'm really hoping we're going to be back. Uh, it's going to be the exact same thing. I'm going to have to take a red eye, stay up all night, do the show, fly back and continue with the exercise. Totally don't care. Going to do it anyway. It's going to be awesome. So if they have us back, we're totally going. So I think none of us, uh, only one of us was it super excited to go to Pittsburgh. Um, but the, I think part of this um, and made it fun for the experience part was that we've got indoctrinated into a organization that is uh, well established and really turned some things around and, and did a great job. I think that we did, we, we, uh, we're above expectations. We have high expectations on ourselves. Uh, we tried to make things happen. And I think, uh, yeah, I think it was a good, good thing for us, but we brought our talents and, and had a good time. It was busy. It was hot, but we, but we, we rocked it. And so I think that made it even better experience. hundred percent. Now, before we move on, cause I've got this over my secret notes, uh, on the, the experiences, secret notes. secret notes, I'm sorry. Just, you know, the, uh, what do they call it on the, um, the apex adjacent, the, you know, Ian, don't look here folder. Now, it has not necessarily always been that obvious to the listeners, but we have made some 
very experimental efforts with the show, uh, recording, promotion, editing perspective. And so, so many of those have just absolutely not paid off at all <laughs> whatsoever. But every time I learn something, so I thank all of you and my co-hosts for staying with this, but more so, I feel like y'all have gotten more comfortable and confident in trying these kind of new broadcast things. And it, it's it's actually everyone like your swimmy videos, right? Or your, your swimmy videos, which right. by the way are right uh the the uh the skimmer videos have now officially gotten more views than um uh my Our solo shows. show, my solo yeah. show that I did. So more people oh. like my my pool skimmer than like me. Um when you said swimmy, I was like, <laughs> wait, are you wearing swimmy somewhere? I'm like, I missed this video. But I I, I am thankful that you guys have you know, okay, mental's trying something else stupid, but you do it anyway. And it has always been fun, even when it doesn't go as expected. So thank you guys for that. This is all of our show. So <laughs> we just, sometimes we just play along. And sometimes we were like, wow, that didn't work at all. Um, or sometimes we're like, hell yeah, that was great. So <laughs> yeah, Throughout why not? Years, all of us have definitely had an idea that the other was really like, yeah, I don't know. And then it's like, oh, that's actually turned out really well. And also the other side of, all right, okay, this is this is so-and-so's idea. Sure, whatever. And after it's like, no, that, mm, not doing that one again. <laughs> Happened yes. to all of us. Yes. Yeah. That, uh, that is it. That's a, that... After 321 shows, you start to figure <laughs> things out sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. We sometimes. don't always learn from our mistakes. There's that. Well, no. it, 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 the last week's episode, we try to learn from our mistakes. We we don't always, but you know, we're we're trying. <laughs> At least you tried. That's exactly. Good. Yes. A, A for effort. <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, let's see. I just goofed Great. something up on my secret notes. All right. Oh, well, yeah. Now no. you're in secret notes. So now I guess we're 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 out of the show stuff and. Into uh, the Unless yes. you've got more on the secret notes and the show stuff. It was great. Well, cool. I, 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 you tell. No, I do not. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, so yeah, outside of the, uh, the, no, okay. There it is. All right. Outside of the show this year. Um, we're going to, we're going to open with this. Uh, Chrissy had a lovely tribute to, to our, our buddy, Aaron, AA Ron fingers up for Aaron. And we also lost Johan this year. And I mean that if you can hear our voice, we, as in all of us, because he was everywhere and so many people, and he was just a larger than life person. Um, but in the spirit of this show, I've come to reflect that really we were all very truly blessed to just know him. And and we even got to party with him in uh at new in uh hpr this Color, year in colorado. Yep, colorado it was fantastic so in this spirit of graciousness and mindfulness it reminds all of us how blessed we are to have a community where we can literally let our freak flag fly so if you can hear this if you're listening to this you have improved our life and you need to know that before you're gone and i wish i could tell the gdo man that i think he already knows and uh -huh. that, you know, that relates to some of the things that uh, our, our listeners have been saying on there. Uh, DJ 914 saying that he's thankful for his family who amaze him every day, his crazy job, even though some days he's not sure what he got himself into his band, his lemons, friends, three puddle mafia racing breakthrough with nausea, his dogs, his toys, the community like not car community, actual housing community, non-car, non-bad friends, health, families, and slowly turning understanding to reserve, to preserve and reduce the impact he is having on this earth, not necessarily in that order. And if that's not thankfulness, I don't know what is. Right. As, as, as thoughtful as he is. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Uh, Albert W said, I'm thankful for my wife of 38 years who let me do dumb stuff without questioning and loves me anyway. For the group of professional enablers who I call friends, the Midwest Lemons teams are awesome and I'm so thankful for them. That's so nice. And uh, also our friend Taco Blake, who said, thankful, thankful for family that understands my silliness and friends that participate in it. So, yes. So thank you true. All. 
Mm-hmm. So true. Okay. And we're, ah, yes. I'm getting lost. I'm scrolling back and forth. On I this know. One, but, I know. We've got, uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on here. Do, do we know what happened to Chris? <laughs> I can only assume that he is struggling with his, uh, he, like you, has an older MacBook that I believe is struggling to keep a charge these days. So I'm pretty sure that's what he's on. And I'm pretty sure it has died. And he's probably trying to figure out how to get it started again. Because that, uh, oh, maybe, maybe we'll find him. Right. Well, and and while we're on this one too, um, and we didn't mention this, and I didn't know really where to squeeze it in because I did want to do that Johan thing. Um, Shelly and Randy got to work with them at Gingerman Judging. And you know we've known Randy it's hard not to know Randy and I'd met Shelly, uh, but getting to work with them, actually like none of us racing, just watching that go. And Randy actually sent us an email saying the oh, same yeah? thing. Yes. So oh. he, uh, he popped in there and said, want to know what I'm thankful for easy assignment this year. So it's his first full year married to his good lady wife, Lauren. He's got a new career. He is designing giant water filters and that makes him the king of effluence at this point his first year okay. lemons judging and we've all judged and he says hot damn that is fun i genuinely like it more than racing i don't know if i'm quite there but you're not wrong it is super super fun and especially interacting with the community and i think eric has done a great job of finding racers that you know understand racers uh, and quote, I'd absolutely pay to watch Shelly commit genocide on douchebag egos over a weekend. Facts. I absolutely would absolutely do that too. She is <laughs> truly hilarious. Um, wow. if at, at NCM, one of her punishments was making people go through her stitch fix and pick out her clothes for next year. And oh, be- wow. Because Shelly is not stupid. If a guy looked at it and said, I hate that, that went straight into her. Oh yeah. I'm definitely buying that. That's going into my inbox because <laughs> you don't know anything. Oh, and then, okay. And then Randy throwing in there too, that dozens of people passed the hat around to send him to the SCCA out across nationals to ruin it with shenanigans. <laughs> the, the, I don't know if you, we, it, not, it wasn't a Nyan cat. It was a Nyan something crown Vic that he went out there. Uh, you no. Know, so now there's a crown Vic covered in truck bed coating and a nine cat that upsets the old guys in parking lots. And if yeah. you didn't see Eric Rude's post on that one, uh, but in a very Randy fashion, he wraps it up with this shit ain't perfect, but it's pretty damn good. <laughs> That's great. So Randy. <laughs> it's so right. Uh, outside of this, uh, you, you, uh, you guys posted some great pictures of, you're uh, some people and uh, you had uh, the, the, not, not a picture with Chris C's mom, but a Chris or picture with Chris's mom. Correct. Yeah. I didn't, I just pulled a couple photos that had groups of us is what I did. Um, and yeah, I know. So we saw actually, uh, so family, let's just start back there because we are uh, so thankful for family and I'm sure mental you are absolutely as well, but um we wouldn't be able to do this without them, uh, especially since we don't have kids to, to watch, but we do have a cat that needs to be watched. So we have that. Um, yeah. You also had we, a sister that broke into your house this year. I did to save the on, day. On so orders, Chris, on orders so, from you. So yes. Chris, you're absolutely right. So Chris could race. Uh, so yes, it's, it's lovely having my family close and uh, I can't wait to see them and, and uh, very thankful for them. Um, but we did see a bunch of Chris's family, some that we don't normally see this year. Uh, she turned uh, she turned a big milestone this year, we'll say. And uh, so we had a nice party with her and her, her whole family. So, um, yeah. So I feel like that's why you have this picture of Chris's mom uh, on our our list of people that we were thankful to see and and happy to see people through. So, all right, that's wonderful. We're still watching Chris sort of wrestle his computer because he pops on and then he pops back off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Ashley Doyle po- popped in there and said, I am grateful for y'all and the podcast as well as family and friends and other blessings, including my 2015 Civic. That was a miracle after improving my credit score in the past 15 years. And I remember uh, them, them sharing a picture of that. It's a good looking car. Due to an accident, I didn't get to transfer over my last vehicle to the Lemons community like Ranger Road somehow. Uh, uh, it was a Subaru Outback, but it was automatic. So he parked it on the street and the borough would have ticketed it anyway. He is also wants to wish Jeff and his family well. 
hope that they are working in the RX-7. Jeff is building a garage, Mahal, right now to work on that RX-7. It's going to be pretty thing. And Eva, he even mentions in that sick new garage soon enough, hopefully the money I'll be saving with the Civic Long Term will lead to a Scion SRS Toyota MR2 or Mazda RX-8 project car if I'm crazy enough to just... Don't don't get the RX eight. It's, I, I, I know we're doing our thankfulness episode. You'll be thankful you didn't get the RX eight. Thankful, um, but it does. You know, uh, last year looking to that, Jeff mentioned that he was very very grateful because he got the Veloster in, and I'm actually really grateful. I still have my Miata. It's I just drove it today, and I still just really really enjoy that car. It I, I shouldn't I shouldn't like that car, especially stepping out of an AMG as much as I do, but I. Darn it. I just can't help it. So I'm thankful for, I know you, I, I know why. Yes, true, exactly. Not too long. Uh, oh, and, and it didn't make it in there, but there are a whole lot of people out there that really want to see you with a Miata, Chrissy. Sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's not in the cards, but, um, but I appreciate everybody's support because rallying around, you know, I don't know that that's going to change his mind, but that's okay. It, that's, it doesn't really matter. Yes. We're in the same house. So it could help all if you could just come back down here and we could have a He show. could. I feel like it's just, you know, the steps he's, he's looked at like it's so far. Um, or he's speaking, thinking he can do it. Speaking of grateful family, we got called out a little bit. Oh, here you are. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, okay. But, I was yeah, but uh, your, your sister said, how about Chrissy's mom and dad and her cookies, which are pretty high on her list. And I believe that the entire community wholeheartedly agrees. We should all be thankful all the time for Chrissy's mom and her cookies. We should. We should. She and if makes you're a magic. new listener, that's not a euphemism. She actually makes just absolutely delightful baked goods. She is amazing. And I'm sure she's got all kinds of things brewing for uh, for the holiday, which is great. <laughs> Probably as much dessert as there is dinner. So it'll be great. Always. As always, it is. Oh, well, great. Nice to have you back. Uh, you haven't yeah. missed what a did I miss? lot. Uh, we've talked about people and we've talked about family and we saw some of your family this uh, summer and I think we're at places outside the show. Yeah. We're at places really kind of fall at the same time in the show, but places you guys, outside. no, you actually got to travel for like work to cool places. Both of you guys. Mm -mm. Pittsburgh and oh, okay. Hartford. I didn't go. To wow. Didn't go to oh my nope. gosh. Def, def did. Oh, no. we've traveled a lot in general though this year. We've, we've traveled been, a lot. We've, yeah. We've been a lot of places this year. And I, I think uh, that's. Yeah. Unrelated to cars. I got to go to Oxnard, California, which I was surprised how much I enjoyed. Oh, and yeah? then I hang out in Malibu when I was, uh, I think I mentioned the, you know, most middle-aged thing ever. I dropped the top on my little Japanese import car and drove the pch at sunset with my ridiculous hair waving in there <laughs> uh yes we were not too long ago i think it was probably september when things started to slow down maybe not maybe even october but we had calculated we had two weekends home uh this whole summer and we decided to go every weekend we were at a different i think a different state I, I'm pretty. I'm pretty, pretty sure. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And it's passing th through what? No, we did. It was, it was 16 weekends. Two of them were home, mm -hmm. and that was by force, not because we wanted to. One of them was because I had a library fundraiser, and the other one was something else. I think we were prepping the race car for something. What? Maybe no, it was. Yeah. Either so way. anyway, uh, we were all over the place, all over the place. So we had so many great trips, uh, a lot of them memorable. A lot of them have fun memories to go along with them. So I'm just keeping at it with uh, we are just so lucky and thankful that we can travel the way we do and that we have the opportunity to go so to many great places. Mm -hmm. I mean, our trips aren't over. We've got two more planned in the next two and a half months, basically. So, yep. Let's do it. Yep. Uh, and it of our uh, feedback we got from you, Mark H. mentioned he's thankful to his team and family, but added that, uh, quote, I'm also thankful to Lemons getting to Road America and letting us run our junk around their beautiful facility. It's the only race we did this year, but it was hands down the best oh, one. Oh, good. I've, that... I've heard a lot of people really enjoyed their time at Road America this year. That's fun. I didn't realize yes. that. That was your only one? That was That's kind of a, it's kind of a, a big one. If you're going to do one, that was a good choice. Sure, so. sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty crazy. 
All right. So I don't have to keep scrolling up. I'm getting, Ooh, that did not work out the way I wanted it to. I was moving some of our uh, listener feedback down to uh, the bottom of the document there. Turn off that. All right. Well, like I'll just roll right into experiences while you fits with the document and formatting mental fits. Yeah. A non-racing, non-card life experiences that were good this year. I'm happy I got back into flying and flew the plane and managed to solo all this year, which is great. Yay! Well, and it took you a while to get there. And we had so much off off time because we were yeah. never home and you never had time to be able to do it. So, yep. yes. Yeah, in between then need, needing to find a time when I'm available, my instructor is available and the weather cooperates. So going solo makes it like take one of those things out. Yes. Yep. I feel like this is a, a lame, it's not even an experience. No, no, it is not. This it is, is good. This is a big accomplishment. This is it, a lot of work. Uh, yeah. The, they have to have those because not everyone can do it. And you put in a great amount of effort. You're so should be much. very proud of this. So much. Uh, yeah. So what we're getting at is that I finished my OSHA cert and, uh, and a bunch of other ones, actually, uh, two other ones. Um, they're my normal ones. I have, I have annual ones that for my job that I have to do. Uh, but the OSHA was so much harder and so much more. Uh, hexavalent chromium. So much... My gosh. Hexavalent freaking, chromium. Freaking hexavalent chromium. I failed that one <laughs> twice. Uh, it was awful. If you deal with that shit, I'm very sorry. Uh, so, so if you know Chrissy is judging a race and you've got a weak sauce theme, <laughs> go find some. Rock but, up. Well, yeah, it doesn't even have to actually, in fact, don't be the substance. What is that? How do you say it again? Hex- uh, hexavalian <laughs> chromium. Hex- but you don't just, don't yeah. be the, don't be the stuff. Uh because it's really but nasty. There's your theme. Hexamated chromium. <laughs> Boom. Um, but it, OSHA is almost getting played out. So I still, when people do it, I'm like, oh, it's cute. But and people have done it well. So I don't think it's worth doing anymore just as a theme. Um, but hexamated but, chromium, that's a theme. Sure. Or if you yeah, dig deep into the OSHA 30 cert and figure out some fun things you haven't done before. And now <laughs> we're talking. Although nobody will get it except for me. Um, yeah. Which so I just by finished. definition makes it the perfect theme. Sure. Actually, I said that up up above. I appreciated everybody who had the personalized themes, especially when I wasn't even at a race. I mean, a bag of sticky change that wasn't really sticky, which is awesome. And I have eaten pizza. Like you guys know me. It's awesome. I think. Well, not just it wasn't sticky change. It was actually the kind of quarters that you like. Uh, was, I know it's even better, right? but it was in a bag that said sticky change. And my mom was like, what does that even mean? And I'm like, mom, come on. Um, so yes, I appreciate that very much. I'm sorry, I forgot I forgot to say that all the way up, up above. But anyway, uh OSHA certs, yeah, it's done. Um, yes, great. Let's not do it again. <laughs> uh I'm grateful. I've been learning about filming and production by doing some of these shoots outside of this show, working with Bid Nerds and the Rami show. Uh obviously borrowing the 911 that is still in my driveway, which I am thankful for, if not feeling still incredibly guilty, but don't care. Cause that's what me and Ken took through Valley of fire yesterday at sunset oh, that's and, drove amazing. To <laughs> and had a great time with that one. Uh, there was a Instagram post some time ago, my friend here, Rami, that we do the Rami show when he bought this absolutely insane 500 horse twin turbo nine thirty that was trying to kill me at 126 miles an hour. And the turbos are coming on. So the rear ends trying to come out from behind me, but all of that is just, I've had all these just great, wonderful experiences. What doing that outside of this show, it's wonderful. And starting the day after Thanksgiving, actually, I've got to do some prep work for it tomorrow. I am actually going to be on a real movie shoot, not as I was oh. as an extra before. We are making a an art film that'll be going around there called uh, Desolation Road. It, it is a whole uh, production. It's going to be cool. And you'll be following that along. I'll be throwing that on all of our social medias as we do that. So if you're bored and tired of watching football this weekend, keep an eye on some of our social media feed. We'll be throwing, we'll be throwing some of that stuff out there, non-food related. You'll see where it's warm in the desert as we're doing uh, filming on that one. Sh- Speaking of pro- overproducing something, Sean Anderson said, I am thankful for being part of Mental's rap video in Alaska and for spending that rally with just the raddest people. Also doing some races with some great folks, but AK lives rent free in my head. That was not my rap video. That was everybody's rap video. And it was truly, truly epic. And I can't believe so many people, Bob from NSF, 
who avoids all cameras and media like the plague is in that video. It's ju- it was just such a good time. And everybody was so on board with doing that kind of insanity. You didn't even mention Alaska on here. Hello. Oh, I totally did. Absolutely. Cordell brothers, that whole Alaska yeah. trip. Yes. Yes. Uh, if, yeah, and if, if you're debating whether or not, you know, Oh, we're thinking about taking a vacation to Alaska. Oh, for goodness sakes, go. It, it, it is, it is like no place on earth. Don't want to move there. We'll visit again, but. Okay. Th- this, time. this just in while I was just beep, 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 moving beep, to a different beep, beep, beep. page. Um, mm-hmm. Vicki Fisher wrote, I am thankful. I am married a wonderful guy and have a happy play, happy and loving family. I also am thankful for the communities we have become a part of and lasting friendships we made along the way. And for Chrissy's mom's cookies. Thanks for the <laughs> shout out. Bill even thanked us. He says, I'm grateful for the uh, Everyone Racers podcast. Oh, pandering. Seriously, guys. I'm just <laughs> thankful for so much more, right? Right. Yep. And we're going to dump this last very lengthy one right on Chris. Because okay. Michael, Michael doesn't K. break it weak. Or Michael. He does not. Michael said the list is endless. Starts with three people. Randall L. Johnson that makes running our team my problem, but keeps the cars coming and his garage when all the work on them, tools, and co-funding the stupidity. That's a good start there. Uh, good Jerry friend. Johnson just gets things built while the rest of us waste our time at work and can unravel any wiring issue. That's valuable. And Karen Mick that watches the dog, the not track dogs. When I go to race or take a motorcycle trip, then they're all the others too numerous to mention that tolerate my oddball existence, encourage my dog rescue passion and car racing stupidity. Oh, and the amazing boy that is my present foster dog, because I've never had a perfect dog before. Fantastic. That's wonderful. What a list. If anybody's looking for a dog to adopt, check out his post on our Facebook because he put a, even put a picture of that guy up, and that's a pretty darn good dog. Oh, uh, this All was an right. amazing list. Uh, so many nice things about people that mean something to them. It's great. Yes. Mostly Aww. about racing, but it's still nice. Any <laughs> mic drops from from the hippie, uh, uh, resident hippie around here? Secret notes? <laughs> no. Or soliloquy uh, you have I, I, prepared? I, um he gave that to start i guess yeah he did <laughs> i yes it, it it is thank you all so so very much thank you all for listening thank you to my co-host for indulging this every year and uh just making everything out there if i was not polite to you or i came across as snippy i absolutely promise you that is a reflection on me and not a reflection on who you are. You are a wonderful person. I hope that you have the same level of gratitude and thankfulness that all of our listeners have shared with us and that we have and do understand that we are grateful for every one of you. Even if you didn't share any of this kind of stuff, you matter, you're important, come be weird and and remind yourself of that. Oh, my trap. There's your soliloquy. Yep. I knew I knew it was <laughs> All right, there. ready for the I know, right? Uh it's never far. Uh are we ready? Yes. Is it okay. time? Yeah. For just, just the, the day. Day. And this is old school, old fashioned Chrissy giving you just the tip. And it's all about Thanksgiving safety tips all the time. Just so you know, that I think these tips are the actual ones that I'm using as my toolbox to not get my work this week. Anyway, oh, uh, we are, yeah, right? Okay, here's some, they seem kind of random. Some of these were food related. So keep baking soda on hand to put out kitchen fires. I've only done this once, but it works. Uh, do not leave food cooking or the stove unsupervised, especially when there's people around. Uh, make sure your smoke alarm is working. Uh, change those batteries. Household fire extinguisher should be nearby or at least know where it is. Uh, do not leave candles burning unattended or burning candles near flammable items like curtains or potpourri. Follow instructions when you're using a deep fire, deep fryer, excuse me, uh, and monitor it closely. Don't be dumb because you could just watch hours of stupid videos on the internet about people being dumb with deep fryers. They're delicious, but watch out. 
Always wash your hands after you handling raw uh, or undercooked poultry and use sep separate cutting boards for raw meat to produce cross-contamination. It helps if they are different colors because that's what we have in our house. Uh, and finally, if, if you're going out, make sure you're taking extra precautions in parking lots because there are a lot of feral kids, dogs, animals, people looking at their phones. They will walk into you and then you will have to um, deal with a lot of crap afterwards. And just make sure you're not texting while driving because that's just dumb. Yep. Safety mic drop. Right? Yep. So I have a job. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> okay. I think we're not doing that as our next show. We're not? Yeah. No. Nope. I think we're doing no. A... We just talked about. Oh, we're that's gonna... right. Yeah. We're... It's it yeah. is it is our annual holiday gift giving guide. So again, if you're stuck in the car with someone right now and you were being forced to listen to this show, you're gonna want to listen next week because we are going to tell you exactly what to get as the perfect gift for that gearhead in your life and we'll link where to find it and maybe some sales depending on what we find absolutely and, it's, and awesome and maybe if you find something we might be posting up because i want to if you're on a good sale if you got something going on text mental right email us do something tell us what you you're finding because we're happy to have your suggestions too Absolutely. And Chris Absolutely. is going to tell you how to do that in just a few minutes. Yeah. Thanks for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. Also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because everyone can be a racer, even if you're a dirty hippie. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's totally free and communal. And then go to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. Be super cool. Even if you hated us, just tell us why. We're down for the feedback. Questions, show ideas, things you saw on sale that are awesome. Drop us a comment on any of the places that we are. So everyone racers or everyone dot racers at gmail.com. Text mental pictures of anything you found that's good on sale or your junk. 484-243-0455. That's about it. Till next week. Keep your shiny, happy side up. Unless there isn't one, then I'm um, sorry. <laughs> Try harder. <laughs> You'll find something to be thankful for. <laughs>